And welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on the Battery Insiders podcast here at currently live in California with Kuberg. Asma, it's really good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Thanks for you know listening in. Um, as you know, in the Battery Insider podcast, we cover a range of different battery topics. Actually, Kuberg is a company we've been with about a year ago. Mm -hmm. So it's really great to, to be here and talk to you and hear some of the updates as well. Um, it's great to see it. I, I've seen Kuberg quite a few years ago when it was just a few people. I can see a bit more people now, so <laughs> and there has been quite a few developments. So maybe if you could just quickly introduce yourself to start with, and then we go from there. Definitely. I am Asma Sharafi. I have joined Kuberg last year in October. Uh, my role here is a cell design manager. Also, I have some activities around the road mapping and the product design. Uh, very excited to join Kuberg and also Northvolt as a parent company. Amazing team that we're working amazing technology, and welcome. Riz from the corporate strategy team here at uh, Kuberg. So I joined the company about two years ago, uh, work on a variety of activities uh, related to company strategy and vision. Um, very excited to have you here and host you again. Welcome back uh, and uh, really looking forward to this. Thanks so much. And yeah, you already mentioned Northwold. We're definitely going to go into this as well and hear a bit more about that. And I think there's immediately some exciting developments there. And But maybe to start, if you could maybe just kick it off a bit, like where are we right now? Like mm -hmm. if someone hears about Kuberg, Northwold, you know, lithium metal cells. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so we were acquired back in 2021. Since then, Kuberg has really gone through a major change uh, and scale up with uh, Northvolt support and uh, uh, funding. And so today we are at the point at which we're really thinking about how best can we scale up to get to large scale manufacturing volumes. And so we're focused on stabilizing the product, ensuring uh, product development is on track to meet our internal milestones. We are gaining commercial momentum as we're working across a diversity of market segments. Uh, and we're uh, really focused on leveraging as much of the scalability uh, know-how and uh, capability that Northvolt has to think about what it is that we should do in our next couple of years to sort of enable us to grow as rapidly as our parent company has. Very cool. And yeah, maybe from a sales perspective as well, like where do we stand right now from, because I mean, we have seen a lot of debate, you know, on lithium metal, solid mm -hmm. state. It's one thing I really appreciate with Richard, right, when I spoke to him quite a few years ago, um, you know, and I think it's been quite vocal about this idea, you know, the holy grail is lithium metal. Mm -hmm. That's what we're in for. Yes. And now we have seen a lot of solid state approaches actually start using silicon instead. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they realize it's very hard to work with lithium metal. Yes. Um, so I'd be kind of curious to hear a bit from, you know, where you stand maybe on the cell perspective. Yeah, definitely. Actually, my background and my uh, career started with solid state batteries, working on lithium metal anode and enabling that through solid state batteries. But as a lot of us in this industry are aware, solid state batteries are um, having some difficulties related to material compatibility with different cathode materials, as well as the solid state with lithium metal, the potential short circuit and dendrite penetration that happens. But main one is really the scaling up from lab scale to commercialization. That has been one of the problems related to defect densities that happen, and also the complexity, uh, complexity related to manufacturing. The benefit of us working on lithium metal anode with liquid electrolyte is the fact that we can utilize the current lithium ion battery equipment and everything and tap into the knowledge that has been developed in the past 10, 20 years. While solid state battery will require new equipment and the viability of the solid state battery for commercialization is really the cost. And this complexity, com complexity will add to the cost of the solid state battery also the supply chain. So with all of those hurdles around, I would say the benefit of Kuberg utilizing liquid electrolyte and a spe a specialized formulation of the liquid electrolyte designed for lithium metal will enable us to use the current equipment and current processing that has been developed for lithium ion batteries. Um, of course, both lithium metal and silicon anode chemistries are used for their benefits of high energy density. Both of them are targeting similar uh, market segment like aviation, EVTOL, ECTOL, high performance vehicle, and we can see like it is in the news that are popping up how there are being more partnership with customers and suppliers. But the problems each of these two are um, sort of dealing with is for lithium metal is related 
to safety, but at the same time, for the silicon, it is experiencing a huge volume change beyond what lithium metal is experiencing. So it is twofold. One is going to be um, sort of for the silicon anode to how we can, in the modular integration or pack integration, accommodate those huge volume changes that will happen, and also the side reaction that can impact the cycle life. Both of them have their own advantages and disadvantages, but the goal of both of them is really high energy, high power cells that will be accommodated for the very like unique market segment that they are going after, and also on blocking a lot in the EV market as well. Great, thanks. And I think you touched some really interesting points there. And I listened to the podcast we did with you know Kubrick about a year ago, mm -hmm. and one thing really, which I think we kind of really stood out to me back then was this notion on you have to actually you cannot take it look at it in isolation you actually have to look at it at the system level yes. right and integration i think this was a big topic then and mm -hmm. also we just came back from a from a conference in las vegas where we had people from ampios and cedar i was moderating a panel with them and also people actually from lithium metal as well and part of the discussion was their the approach from like we have like this ampios right we have to build like a full system mm -hmm. right and we have to offer because it's really hard for other people to produce it and integrate and things like that um, but then Sila is like, we do a drop-in solution, right? We want to give you the material and you make your cells and, and things like that. I guess you're going more on the system level approach and maybe you could share a bit, any updates on that as well, that'd be great. Um, so uh, the benefit of having a system integration and vertical integration is that we can learn in a faster manner. And the fact that the lithium metal based chemistries are having a completely different behavior than lithium ion. Uh, some of it is related to safety concerns. Some of it is the regulation that we have to adapt to for aviation, for example. And that doesn't uh, like happen in the cell level, it is at the system level, how you can go for the like a propagation resistance as well as a containment. So that is when you have to tap into the system design and what you can do there. The other one is the stack pressure requirement, volume changes that I like uh, mentioned previously. So with all of those, once you start learning about the performance of your little your cell in general, it is easier to look into what would be the best way to design it in a system, looking into integration. If the, you're going for higher volume changes or a stack pressure requirement, then you can design a very amazing high energy density cell, but then you're going to get hit with the integration factor that will bring you down at the system level. So in Kuberg, what we do, we are utilizing this a very close relationship for uh, system integration and the architecture of the system. So we know how we can change our cell design in order to adapt into what would be the most optimum design in the system and vice versa. There's a lot that we are learning together and it is uh, helping us to also educate uh, the automotive or aviation or whoever has designed modules and packs around lithium ion batteries to show them this is a different behavior and this is how you can accommodate these uh, like level of changes that are happening uh, when you're comparing these two different chemistries together. Great, thanks. And you already touched a bit on application, maybe also this from a strategy perspective, if you could share a bit on that, right? Because I think, yeah, I mean, aviation is one which is quite prominent, right? And mm -hmm. talking about, and there's, there's debate about this, right? I think it's something I'm personally very excited about. I think it's it's really, really cool. But yeah, it's, it's also maybe not one of the easiest applications, but also one which is excited for new solutions. So maybe if you could share a bit more on that and also other applications you might have looked at. Yeah, no, I, <clears throat> absolutely. And I think I'll, I'll, I'll add just some commentary on thinking about lithium metal and silicon chemistries. I think like the thematic that probably rises that's most important is that for electrification to happen, especially in the hard to electrify segments, we'll need several types of solutions with its own various pros and cons when it comes to the type of chemistry that's approaching the, the problem. And so it's not necessarily that we're in competition with silicon or that there is some sort of animosity. The, the reality is you need a whole host of next-gen battery chemistries to help the world sort of electrify to meet carbon targets. Um, and so when we think about Kuberg's positioning within our, uh, from a business perspective, I think Osma noted a lot of really good reasons why we've decided to do system integration in-house because of the close technological relationship between the cells and the modules and systems that we produce. But from a business perspective, it's also so important for what we can offer to our customers and our market segments, because 
it's not just the know-how, it's what that know-how enables for the long term. So what we can do at the system level from optimization of how the energy is managed, thermal management, and really future state thinking, you know, uh, services at the pack and system level can really enable a lot of the business cases that are, uh, you know, uh, important for our end use case customers. And within those segments, as you duly noted, electric aviation is a big, and, and growing industry that we are pursuing. Part of it is because that industry is really limited by the performance of the batteries. And so they are heavily focused on power and gravimetric energy, energy density to allow their aircrafts to carry more payload, fly further and fly longer ranges. And because of that relationship between the performance of our product, as well as the needs of that market, I think Kuberg is in a really strong position, both at the cell level and at the system level, to offer a sort of a complete solution that enables the the use case of our uh, end, end customers. Uh, in similar fashion, when we think of other high, you know, uh, use cases that require incredible amounts of power, great weight savings, uh, lower amounts of space consumption, right? VED, GED, and and power density. You know, we we are focused on also the high performance uh, automotive space, motorsports. And really, when you think about okay, what value does that add for that end use case, it's all about better drivability, longer range, increased performance. And those are the criteria by which that market segment is really looking to create value for its end customers. So aircraft is still flying longer, carrying more payload. And again, all that is really enabled down at the product level when it comes to the battery. Cool. Maybe to touch a bit on this, and I'm not sure if that's something you can talk about, right? And um more kind of like the, the stage, because I know from automotive, you talk a lot about A cells and B cells and C cells and, and now, but I guess if you then talk about systems, right, like, is this the way you think and that you communicate with each other? Like, you know, now we've got a system which maybe has energy density, but maybe not the life cycle yet, or now we've got another one which can hit the life cycle, but there's something else you have to optimize the tone management. So kind of, yeah, maybe the way you think about it, and I'm, I'm not sure if you can also share where you roughly are in this kind of yep so both both at the system level and at the cell level i mean i won't you know associate uh where we are in the a sample to d sample uh let's call it phases from the automotive standpoint it's a little bit different in the uh, aviation standpoint or around how they stage gate the development of the product um, but with respect to the system and at the cell i think we are uh you know rapidly increasing the maturity of both the cell level technology so we're moving from multiple generations of improvements at the cell level and simultaneously as we're designing our modules and systems, we are uh, hitting internal milestones for development as well as milestones for customers. Uh, I think probably hopefully soon, we we firmly believe in the value of third-party validations. We will be releasing a third-party validation report on our module. And that is, you know, uh, there is in the battery industry generally a lot of claims around energy density, power, cycle life that are being made by a lot of players. I think Kuberg has taken the route to be as transparent as possible. And we do so not by just saying so, but by actually getting third-party validations to back it up. So we did a validation report at our cell level back in 2022. We have two more in flight for this year. And then we will be very shortly releasing a module validation report, which was tested in a external party um, and, and our you know, our, our module at that time reached 692 cycles at a very high uh, energy energy density at the pack level. Um, so these are the milestones that we hit and we sort of externalize them through external validation reports, which we sort of find a lot of value in. Very cool. And maybe also a bit of, because again, looking out here, you know, fortunately you can all see it, right? But like, um, there, there's a few more people and I think you had a lot of growth as an organization and now you also got acquired, right? By, by an even larger organization, which we know in Europe quite well, um, with Northfall, right? Maybe some of your learnings there, like how is it to be part of like something bigger? I mean, I guess mm-hmm. the pros, the cons, anything you can share on that? Yeah. Well, uh, one of the key points related to being a part of a startup uh, company is the fact that you are resource constrained. But being a part of Northwell, we have access to the resources that uh, Northwell can provide to us. Not only the infrastructure and also the resources and the expertise and like everything that we are finding it challenging, we can really uh, expedite those development times and really learn from the experts and facilitate all of the things that we need to do, not being resource constrained. The other one is really the fact that by being a part of Northwell, 
we can really be impactful in a shorter amount of time. So again, we are around 200 people at the current stage, but everyone knows developing a new technology, taking it to the scale, hearing the voice of customers and making sure you're adapting your technology fast while you're also doing cell to system integration and testing and developing, then there is a lot more aspect in the infrastructure and the ecosystem that you have to live in. And we are very um, sort of, uh, uh, happy to be a part of the entire ecosystem that the Northvolt has. Not only learning and working with their supply chain, but also um, having the infrastructure of like looking into what comes next, what would be the next innovative technology to work on that not only we can benefit from and our all technology can benefit from, but also how we can support their advanced battery technology platform that they're going after. And um, a lot of cost reduction that will also we can uh, uh, benefit from. There is recycling that we are working with them. We cannot really put a lot of focus on that part, but we can benefit from being a part of the bigger corporation that have all of that under their control and benefit from uh, having those collaboration with them. Yeah, I think <clears throat> that is probably the biggest differentiator Kuberg has is our partnership with Northvolt. All the investment Northwell has already made in making the greenest battery sort of mm -hmm. on the planet through 100% renewable electricity, through their uh, supply chain with respect to the deals they, they create around domestic supply and through the innovation and the development they've done on recycling and then not only scaling it up, but then really driving innovations in improving recycling technology for lithium ion. If you apply all those same principles, we have not only exposure to it, but we really have roadmaps to sort of integrate as best as we can across those capabilities. So let's take advantage of their equipment supply chain. Let's take advantage of their domestic supply base. Let's take advantage of the fact that they can get us to a path to not only create a high performing product, but also drive the sustainability footprint of our product mm -hmm. because they have all the expertise in it. Um, and I think. You know, if you think of customers that are looking to partner with Kuberg, they're never just partnering with Kuberg, they're partnering with Norfolk as well. And so if you're an OEM in the aviation space and the automotive space, you are by default partnering with a very large, uh, stable uh, battery manufacturer based in the sort of Western hemisphere between Sweden, Montreal, Germany, and now also in the US. Um, and I think that's something that sort of, you know, putting yourself in the shoes of the customer, it's such a big differentiator with having someone that's stable and bankable and a long-term partner that can sort of feel, that can survive kind of the ups and downs of the macroeconomic environment. Um, and and that's, that's really where uh, we see a ton of value. I really appreciate you sharing that. And I think it's interesting as you say also, and I think in Northwood case, we also have seen other partnership with like one of the sodium iron space and bring in different technologies, right? And I think becoming a platform and, one thing I'm personally quite curious to see is in the future as well, right? Because I think one thing startups really have is the speed, you know, and you're like small and you're like, might, you know, like you're, as you say, much more constrained on how many people, but you can jump on these crazy ideas. Mm -hmm. And I guess now you have to kind of really build it up. And I guess that's also part of the new stage you're in, right? That you actually now have to really, you know, the expectations that you actually build real products rather than as a startup where it's about champing a new idea and bringing this up, right? Which is for me exciting because it gives me hope that, you know, you're building something which we hopefully can all use. Yeah. Yep. No, absolutely. I think. That, that's another you know, reason where Northvolt is taking a multi-pronged approach to the products that they're bringing to market, whether it's lithium ion technology for energy storage systems and the EV market, or investing in low cost solutions with sodium ion, or investing heavily in uh, high performance products for hard to electro applications. It's not just, hey, we're a battery manufacturer. No, we're, we're looking to electrify all mobility and all applications because, you know, I think a, a quote is, you know, batteries are really the new oil, right? It's, it's a mode of transportation for energy and it's gonna have all sorts of permutations to it. Um, and I think we have to be forward leaning in investing in innovation so that we can sort of keep up with the mobility applications that are evolving. Fantastic. I think with this, we're going to wrap it up. I really want to thank you both for, for coming on and sharing some of your exciting insights. And now I'm excited to actually see your new facility. So I think that will be the next step. And unfortunately, we cannot bring you all with us, but maybe one day you can also do a visit here and, and see it for yourself. So really appreciate it for both of you. It's an asthma to come on. My name is Simon Enke, founder and chair of Battery Associates. And yeah, please, if you're interested, go on batteryinsiders.com or look on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or anywhere else you listen to your podcasts. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye.